Hi, I'm Bill Hobson, and I think it's time we take a moment to talk about the rules of the game, especially in light of the revisions that were invoked at the beginning of 2019, because many of them apply directly to us as amateur golfers. And if we don't know how to handle them, it could cause a little bit of an issue with your buddies at your next Saturday morning foursome. And also, by the way, there are some tweaks that the USGA needs to make and could make in, in three minutes that would take away a lot of question and a lot of controversy. We'll get to that in a moment. But first, let's talk about the context of all of this discussion. There are some of the rulings that will never impact amateur golfers. We are highly unlikely as amateurs to be penalized because our caddy stood behind us for too long while we lined up a shot. Maybe at your club championship, but that's a fairly small percentage of the golfing public. Instead, I want to focus on the drop rule. Now, a little bit of a historical education before we go any further. Did you know that it used to be that a drop was taken blindly over your back? You would reach back here and drop the ball. And wherever it ended up, that's kind of where you had to chase it and play it. That's a tough way to make a living. And you talk about an added disadvantage. I was glad that that rule was revised years ago to allow for the drop right out front. This is the ruling and the, the protocol that most of us are very familiar with. Shoulder length, drop it. Play it where it lies as long as it doesn't go any closer to the hole. Well, the revision that started at the beginning of 2019 lowered that level to knee level. Exactly knee level. Precisely knee level. And nowhere different. We have seen Ricky Fowler demonstrate the inanity of that ruling with his famous dump drop, a poster that will forever live, at least in his memory and probably that of the USGA, We've seen the back and forth between the USGA and Justin Thomas and the players who, again, who play the game for a living coming out and saying, listen, we got to make some changes here. And those players have largely been pilloried as whining babies. And I, and I don't necessarily agree with that. Now, I do think that golf in general, the PGA Tour and the USGA would be very wise to invest some thought and some rulings into pace of play, but that's not what we're talking about today. I want to focus for the next couple of moments just on the drop. Let's do a little bit of a physics exam, keeping in mind that I never took physics. I couldn't stand math or numbers. So kind of uh, my version of physics is sort of the common sense man's version. So. Let's do some math. I'm 6'5". Uh, I'm seated right now, but I'm 6'5". If I stood up, you would, I'd be cut off to about here. At shoulder level, if I take a drop, the likelihood of this ball remaining in the spot that I hope it remains in is really quite small, right? If I drop it from this height, even onto a level floor, that ball just ended up over there. If I'm at knee height and I take a similar drop, then it's going to the odds of it staying where I hope it stays are much better, right? That goes without saying. In fact, during the discussion period over the prior 18 months, the USGA invited comment from golfers from all walks of life, and they had actually considered making the drop as low as one inch off the ground, basically so just so you weren't placing it. And it was going to be from your shoe top. And instead, in the, in the ensuing conversation, it came up roughly 18 inches, depending on your height, to knee level. Well, now this is interesting. First of all, I don't have any problem with knee level. What do I care? I can bend over and do that. I know it looks ridiculous, but come on. A lot of what we do in golf looks ridiculous. I get that. I've been told that by non-golfers. So let's not worry about the visual implications of the ruling. But let me ask you a question. If we know beyond the shadow of a doubt from physics, from observation, from testing, that the player's greatest advantage is to drop it from knee level because that's when the ball is most likely to stay in the spot you intended it. And that the higher you go for the drop, the less advantage the player receives. Why not just make the rule say drop should take place from as low as knee level? instead of exactly at knee level. And we have seen a couple of players penalized because they, out of the, the force of habit from a couple of decades of playing the game, they walked up, they were already irritated because they hit the ball into a penalty area and they had to take a drop. And so they did it at shoulder level because that's how they've always done it. Caddy wasn't paying attention, whatever. My point is, 
of all of the conversation and controversy about the rules, why not make this super easy and logical fix? You could issue a press release tomorrow that says, as of X date, all drops may take place from as low as knee level. I don't know, you want to put a top end on it, then say from knee to shoulder level. Maybe a player wants to take a drop from up here. I don't know, but I, I don't understand why you would see the need to penalize somebody for going by muscle memory from a few decades in the game and just taking a drop. I, I understand that there are some free drops coming from obstructions. Maybe you're standing in the cart path. Maybe there's a drain, a sprinkler head, whatever. But it, And I think most of us have been in all sorts of drop-related scenarios. So the solution to this issue could not be simpler. Just change the wording to say as low as knee level. The last thing we need is for somebody who's finally falling in love with the game and decides to enter a, an amateur tournament, for instance, for their state association. In my state, it's the Golf Association of Michigan. And I love it when I learn that somebody is competing for the first time ever. I remember the nervousness the night before that first time ever. Yes, some of the nervousness was tied to playing, but some of it was, I don't want to screw up the rules. I don't want to get it wrong and end up you know, suffering a penalty or being DQ'd because I didn't know all the rules. I don't want that first time competitor who's finally decided to put their game on the line, play everything by the book, to have somebody say, you know, I'm pretty sure you, you took that drop from waist level, or maybe thigh level, or shoulder level. That's not what this game is about. If you're paying the price for a drop, it shouldn't matter if it's from knee level or shoulder level. The higher you go, the more you as the player are disadvantaged. And, and by the way, I am really glad the USGA addressed the idea of rulings. It needed to happen. I'm just saying now that there are a couple of little tweaks that could be made to really make this the best possible outcome for golfers at every level. I don't want to see any more dump drops or have any more Twitter feuds between the top players in the world. That's all unseemly, but that's not that big of a deal. What I'm more concerned about is you and I, as amateurs, losing our enthusiasm for the game because of a little comma, the fine print, or somebody who's a little overzealous saying, I'm pretty sure you took that drop from thigh level. And as we all know, that is a major crime in the game of golf. I would love to hear your thoughts on this subject. So please give us a call on our 24-7 listener hotline at 989-787-0193. And in fact, for everybody who does call, we're going to draw one name to win a dozen Chrome Soft golf balls from Callaway. So I hope you'll take advantage of that. And we'd like to hear how this whole discussion impacts you as an amateur golfer. Thanks for watching. Now, USGA, do the right thing. The solution takes three minutes.